Hey guys, how's it going? It's Cody Orgel here. So in today's video, I'm going to be interviewing Ali from cyclingabout.com. I had uh, the opportunity to interview him back in December, and I still haven't released this interview to you guys. So in this video, I interview him. Um, he shares his story, like how he got started in bicycle traveling, bicycle touring, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we have really good chats, awesome. So if you guys are really interested into bicycle traveling, you've been following me because of my bike touring adventures, then you'll probably like this interview. So without further ado, here's Ali. Ali, how's it going? It's good. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Thanks for coming on and having a chat with me. I really appreciate it. That's uh, awesome. It's no stress at all. I'm literally in bed every day, all day. So Yeah, yeah. Well, how have you been um, going with the recovery of the injury and all that stuff? It's been fine. Yeah. I mean, broken ribs are really, really bad when you are trying to sleep. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I can roll around now. I don't wake up in the middle of the night because of the yeah. ribs. So I think okay. it's been almost five weeks. Yeah. So, so was it just the ribs or I think you, you said you mentioned something about a wrist? Yeah. 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 So the wrist has tendon damage down the side here. Okay, yeah. And it's not quite recovering as fast as I would have hoped. Yeah, but um, yeah. I think with this wrist brace, because there's a metal piece that goes all the way down it, uh -huh. I should be able to get going in about a week and yeah. have the wrist stable enough with the brace. Okay. So, yeah, I don't see why. Why not? Yeah, yeah. I won't be able to ride rough roads and go hiking through the mountains, but I'll be able to be on the bike. Yeah, I've, I've been in, in kind of awe of your videography and all that stuff and just checking out like the scenery and all of that, like the way you, you depict sort of, um, you know, like the environment and all that. It's quite amazing. So Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no it's, I mean, I've got the environment to give credit for, for that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The Andes are just ridiculous. Yeah, they look it's like It's amazing, it. yeah. Yeah, so um, can we get into the, your current tour at the moment? So obviously you're having a bit of a rest from that at the moment and um, and resting up. So you're riding the Americas, um, and how long were you planning? It was like two years, right? From, yeah, so... From Argentina I was, to Alaska? I was planning December last year Yeah. all the way through till maybe August or September next year. Okay. But I'm a little bit behind time now, so it's probably going to be longer if mm. I want to keep traveling in the same style that I am now. Okay. So it could be up to a year longer. Yeah. So so are you stopping to, to work on, like, your blog and all that sort of stuff and, and do the videos yeah. and stuff? So I guess my schedule is something like three weeks of cycling uh -huh. and then, like, a week to ten days off. Okay. And that's been that's been working really well because I can like do between somewhere between one thousand and three thousand Ks in that time, depending mm -hmm. on the terrain. And I'll go through lots of different landscapes, meet a lot of people, and then be able to make a pretty good summary of my trip. Mm -hmm. Um and then in the, the one week or sometimes it's a bit longer, maybe it's ten days. I can make a film, I can write a few articles that I've had, like, ideas in my head. I can update the social media if I haven't had internet access for a while. So, yeah, that's been that's been really good. Like, some people like to do, you know, two days on, one day off, or three days on, two days off, or whatever it is. But for whatever reason, for me, three weeks on is great. Yeah. And I think we need that downtime too as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, Pretty much the first day back, I just binge watch YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like every every channel that I follow, there's like heaps of new videos. So yeah, yeah. That's kind of like just rest for a day, eat really good food in a city. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Speaking about food, um, you're vegan, aren't you? How yeah. long have you been vegan for? I think it's been five or six years now. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, when was yeah, because I'm vegan myself as well. I've been vegan for I oh, think, cool. almost a year now. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's been quite a while. Um, I think it was 2013, somewhere somewhere in 2013. Um, and I was traveling full time at that, that time as well. Yeah. And um, it was it was really slow. Like the, the years leading up before that, I was like a flexitarian, I guess. Mm. And then there was just a, 
a crunch time where I was like, okay, I need to, I need to do something now. Like my brain's telling me one thing and uh, yeah, I just need to align my morals with what my actions are. So yeah, that kind of happened very fast, the decision, but it was like mm -hmm. a long process. Yeah. So, so how, um, how do you think you sort of got sort of started in it? Was it someone that influenced you or was it more about just doing the research and stuff like that or, and figuring out, um, you know, I think I watched forks over knives in maybe 2012. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that, that would, that gave me a lot of reassurance that you could be healthy and be a vegan because mm. I just, didn't have the idea that I could ride my bike, you know, a thousand kilometers a week or whatever I was doing and not eat animal products. Like I genuinely thought that was the case. Mm. And then that was, I think that was the catalyst, but I don't know. It was probably conversations with people and yeah, a mix of all kinds of stuff yep. really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I just needed, I knew I wanted to be vegan, but I needed to know that it was going to be possible with my lifestyle. Mm. Yeah, because like traveling is obviously hard in some places like crossing a desert or going through the high Andes mountains. But mm. yeah, yeah one, I just one, I had no idea. Yeah. One thing I had trouble with was um, like on my recent tour was like when people would offer me food and it wasn't vegan and you'd have to sort of say no or whatever, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. or, or like when like his you're really hungry and you want to eat right but it's yeah it's just really difficult to sort of balance that i guess yeah i guess you get good at that don't you yeah like, that's right yeah you can you you don't actually offend people like people they want to help you yeah and that's right if if you say oh sorry i can't eat that but i can eat this then they'll 99 percent of the time like respond in a really welcoming way and like they want to help like they don't they don't want to annoy you or yeah. be annoyed themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I, I always have positive interactions, even like people who don't understand what a vegan is at all. I still have a positive interaction with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so um, when and how did you sort of get into this whole world of bicycle travel and, and bicycle touring and all that? Um, I was 18 and I was traveling around Borneo mm -hmm. and I met somebody who wasn't traveling by a bike, but I was telling this person how much I loved cycling and how much of it I did at home. And I was just backpacking around. And this person was like, why don't you just travel with a bike? And that was like the light bulb moment. I was yeah. like, it, it's not something that ever crossed my mind. Or if it did cross my mind, it was like, these really, really old men that like were social introverts who like <laughs> just kind of used it as an escape. That was mm. kind of, I didn't know anyone my age that did it basically. And um, then I made friends with somebody like if only a few months later who, was, who had just gone on a bike tour and he was my age. Mm -hmm. And he was like, we should go on a bike tour together. And I was like, okay. Yeah, like I'd thought about it for a while. And then um, we went to Myanmar yeah. um, or Burma. Yeah, Burma. And that was like a life-changing experience for me, just in terms of style of travel and like what, what you can do with a bike that you can't do with a backpack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, Travel's yeah, so that, much that's, that's how it started. And like it's exponentially got more involved in my life since yeah that's amazing so yeah. um i read somewhere that you've been to um 80 plus countries or something like that where all of them yeah traveled by bicycle yep yeah yeah awesome yeah, yeah so like since i've been since i was 19 i've been traveling with the bike only like mm -hmm. literally every time i've gone anywhere has been with a bike yeah sweet yeah so you went on a um a two-year trip was it was it two years on the tandem bike yeah so yeah. that was from amsterdam in the netherlands all the way back to australia oh sweet yeah yeah awesome. so we kind of we zigzagged over europe for about a year mm -hmm. maybe a bit under a year 
and then we cross Turkey, Georgia, Azerbaijan, into Iran, and then right through Central Asia up to the Himalayas. And we couldn't get a visa for China. Like, we literally had to fly home and get out a visa in Australia if we wanted to go into China. And that was because there was a lot of, like, political stuff going on in the Western provinces. Mm -hmm. So we decided instead of crossing China and going to Southeast Asia, we would use that time in South Korea and Japan. And, like, that was amazing. Like, China's a really hard place. I'd been before that time, like, just on shorter trips. And it was almost relieving to know that we didn't have to cross China. Yeah. Like, so, the infrastructure for Korea and Japan is just next level. Yeah, for sure. I've been to Japan too. I've cycled a bit of this, this, the south of Japan. And, oh, yeah, awesome. it's, it's quite an amazing place. Yeah, definitely. Like, onsens everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> just good. Food and internet and, like, I love how compact the cities are. Mm. So you'll be in the city and then like two minutes later, it's back to nature. There's no like intermediate kind of thing like we have in Australia. Yeah, you did mention also, um, and I found this too, is the cities there, they're, you did mention like they're very quiet and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and they're clean too, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, is, it is strange, like being in the middle of a city with 20 or 30 million people and you can't hear anything. Yeah, it's, it's just, crazy. It's just silent. Nobody's nobody's loud in Japan. <laughs> Everyone's respectful. So if you had to choose, would you prefer to cycle like as a bike packing setup or bike touring setup? Because I, I think like bike, bike packing isn't quite sort of sustainable in a way for long longer trips in a way because you can't carry as like as much stuff, if you know what I mean, in terms of like yeah. necessities and things. Yeah, but I what are your thoughts? It, it depends on the trip. Yeah. So... Yeah. On a multi-year trip, like over the years, I've broken so much lightweight gear and every time I break something, I replace it with something that's a little bit stronger. Mm. And so the stronger stuff's a bit heavier, it's normally a bit bulkier. So over time, like my volume and weight has just increased naturally because I want to be comfortable and I want gear that's going to last. Like they're my two priorities for like a multi-year trip. Mm -hmm. Um, But... Most of the stuff that I was doing when I was last in Australia was with bikepacking bags. So just going faster and lighter, traveling for two to three weeks max. And like, that was totally fine. That it's sustainable to not have much, Mm -hmm. um, be a little bit uncomfortable, but yeah, yeah, multi-year, I like durable, strong, comfortable. They're, they're my priorities. Yeah, that's also one of the things I sort of have discovered through bicycle touring is the simple idea that we don't really need that many things to to sort of get by in life. Like, I guess we get caught up in the idea in this sort of Western society to always, you know, keep up with the Joneses and buy the newest thing and all that sort of stuff. And I find through bicycle travel, like, I don't know, it's, it's kind of... Um, I've taken it into my life back home where I just have less things. I've sold all the, you know, most of the stuff that I've had and... I live with less yeah. and I'm more happier for it. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think I've always been a minimalist. So, yeah. like, even th- I've never really hoarded anything ever. Yeah. I've always, like, sold things as soon as I've upgraded things or, like, given clothes away to Salvation Army or, yeah, that, like, I've always managed things in my life in that way just because I always felt better because yeah. of it. But yeah. I think bike travel takes it to a new level. Like that's for sure. Yeah. You you literally have ten to twenty kilograms of everything that you own for periods of time, and that's all you need. Like yeah, and that, it all that serves like a purpose a too, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, like whenever I am in a place for a long time, like um, I was in Australia for a few years in between these two trips, mm-hmm. and Like, there's so many nice things about having more clothes and, you know, having a kitchen full of nice stuff to make food. And, yeah, there's there's heaps of things that I still think are necessities when you're living in a city. But Mm. you realise how far back you can pair all of your gear when you go on a bike trip. Yeah. So um, do you think, uh, 
like it's important to to cycle alone like and, and sort of get the benefits in a way like i find when i'm cycling alone i'm able to i don't know be, be more creative um and i guess like get sort of more time to think in a way um do you yeah. think it's important to do like solo traveling i think both are equally as important yeah like sure. i think it would be sad if you went like if you loved bike travel but you never did a solo trip yeah but i don't i also think it's sad if you only do solo travel and mm. you don't get to like share experiences with someone else and have a massive memory bank of experiences mm -hmm. that you can draw upon with others so yeah. i i think like i can't say that one is better than the other i think they're they're pretty equal and i enjoy both about the yeah. same okay. but yeah on the solo trip i've learned so much more about myself mm. just generally like having 24 hours just to think is incredible it's yeah. such a unique such a unique thing hi kitty <laughs> um so yeah i think i think there's huge benefits to both yeah sweet um so i was going to talk about like um i just got some notes here what are some of um your favorite sort of memories and, and highlights from all of your time bicycle touring if you had to pick a couple of them yeah um so I guess people often ask me what my favorite countries are. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of my favorite memories are tied to those countries. So I'll, yeah, I'll let you know what they are. Um, for people, I don't think you can go past Iran. They're by far, like by a factor of 10, the most generous people in the world. Mm -hmm. So you'll be walking along the street in a random city and every five minutes someone will come up to you they'll introduce themselves they'll ask where you're staying they'll ask um whether you've eaten and if like you don't have anywhere to stay they will literally invite you to their house and this is this is not just randomly this is every day all the time wow, wow. so that like going to a place like that you realize how much more generous people can get and like people literally took me on a holiday with them. So they'd invite me to their house and then they're like, in two days, I actually have to go on holiday with my family. Do you want to come? Like just crazy stuff like that. Wow. So I think the just the people and experiences that you'll have in Iran, are they're unique in this world. Yeah. Um, other places that I think are incredible are Bolivia and Peru. So. I've been in Peru for almost six months now, mm -hmm. and I plan to be here between two and three months. And the only reason I've stayed so long is because of how incredible the landscapes are. Mm. So like every valley that you go between, there is a completely different feeling, climate, um, like just everything changes. There's incredible rock formations, there's places to camp, there's no cars, there's fresh water. So in terms of adventure travel, I think Bolivia and Peru are up there with the best in the world. Wow, okay. For sure. Yeah, I'll have to put that on the list. Yeah, um, yeah, it's absolutely wild here. Yeah, sweet. So um, do, if you um, had to give any tips for someone, I guess, who was sort of starting out or, or was, um, I guess, feeling like they're sort of held back in a way and they, and they uh, sort of wanted to get into this, this world of bicycle travels like what sort of advice would you give them um so a lot of people who ask me like how do i start um i always tell them to go on a credit card tour mm -hmm. so like because a lot of people don't have camping equipment or they don't have a touring bike or you know whatever it is but everyone mm -hmm. has a bike yeah so you can easily eat out of supermarkets and like cafes and stuff and then stay in like hostels or um like motels any any form of accommodation and like you could do you know two days or you could do a week or you could do a month in that way mm -hmm. and get the experience of what it's like to do bike travel before you invest in like a dedicated touring bike or dedicated bike packing bags or any other camping equipment as well so I think that's, it's not a must. Like if you already know that you like camping 
and you already know that you like cycling, there's a good chance that you'll like to integrate both of them. But if you mm -hmm. want to just get started, just don't have the gear and just outsource everything. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, so I was actually um, talking to um, Tom. He He's here in Australia and he um, is into bicycle touring stuff. And I asked him, like, if he had any questions for you too. And he said, um, yeah. like, what do you do in regards to um, saddles and sort of on the bike clothing? Do you have, like, a particular sort of saddle that you use and, like, are you wearing sort of nicks under your shorts or whatever like that? Or yeah, how so, do you do that? So I have... A pretty extensive cycling background so yep. I kind of know what seats I like and what shapes I like and what models I like just through lots of mountain biking and road racing and stuff yeah um, but this the current seat that I'm using I so I broke a seat in Cambodia mm -hmm. and I was like shit where am I gonna get a seat that I'm comfortable on and so I just bought the first seat I could find in a bike shop in Cambodia and that's the seat that I've used for the last five years. Wow. So it, it, the shape just worked. Yeah. And I don't know why. I don't know how I'm going to get another one when I break this one. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it just works really, really well with my body. And I can't ride without nicks with it. I, I do get, like, saddle sores if I try and do more than, say, 20 kilometres on it. Mm -hmm. um, so I have cycling undershorts or under nicks or... I don't know what the, the technical category is, but yeah, basically it it's, yeah, but it's it's not designed to be worn on the outside. So they're yeah. like a really, really light mesh with a chamois. Mm -hmm. So they breathe better. They're pretty much see-through. So you do need to wear them under shorts. Yep. But um, yeah, that just allows me to be a little bit more casual and have some pockets and I can pair them with whatever shorts I'm wearing at the time as well. So that's been that's been great. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so, good combo. Yeah, yeah. So um, the cycling about blog and, and the brand and all that stuff, is that kind of like a, a full-time sort of thing for you? Is that like what you're spending most of your time on when you're not cycling? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I love creating resources mm -hmm. and information and like helping people go on bike adventures just through like gear selection or how to do this or where to go, you know, any of that sort of stuff. So yeah. how long have you been um, um, doing the blog for? I started it when I um, started in Europe. So yeah. that was that was six years ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I started it a little bit before that, but, um, yeah, I didn't spend heaps of time on it until I started travelling. Mm -hmm. And it was just a way in the start just to document our trip. Yeah. So it was just purely purely about the stories and photos and stuff. But I kind of realised that there wasn't, an, when I was researching parts and equipment and stuff, I kind of realised that there wasn't any other website that was telling me the information that I wanted to find out. So I just started creating it. Yeah. And, yeah, it's been six years since then. And, yeah, nowadays I've got some sponsors and I've written a few books that I sell through my website. Yeah. And people also support me along the way. So um, I've only just started this, but like, there's Patreon where all of the money that people donate on Patreon goes into camera equipment because mm -hmm. I break so much gear. Yeah. <laughs> I go through, go through cameras and tripods and lenses and all of that stuff all the time just because of the places I take my gear. Mm. Um, and then on the website, you can also support the website and like that just goes into web design and hosting and all of that sort of stuff. So it's kind of, it's all just a way to offset the costs of travel and yeah. provide like inspiration or how to kind of stuff for other people. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like a giving back in a way as well. So that's cool. So yeah. um, does it take a lot of work to sort of edit your videos and um, work on the blog? Like how many hours do you reckon you're spending on, on all of that sort of stuff? So my latest video was about six days of editing. So wow, yeah. it's, it's pretty huge. And, and then, a lot of it's just sorting through all of the stuff I capture over three yeah. weeks. Like there is gigs and gigs and gigs of like hundreds of gigs of videos mm -hmm. and like 
I try and bust the camera out as much as possible to talk to it. And then, yeah, I kind of have to make a story with, you know, all of these hours of footage and yeah, you can't, you can't do that in a day. So yeah, there's probably like, sometimes I can make a video in two days, but the most recent ones, cause there've been so much content, um, I've had to take five or six days to, to make them. Yeah. And then, um, I'd say, the majority of the time I spend on the website is just replying to comments. Like, yeah, that I remember a while ago, I went away for three weeks and I was like, okay, I'm gonna have a break from the blog. And when I got back, it took me two days to respond to every comment. Wow. So yeah, and that was like nine to five replying yeah. to comments. So that just gives you an idea of how much time it takes to just reply to people. Mm. It's yeah, pretty insane, but I do love it. So it yeah. it doesn't seem like work to me at all. Yeah, that's cool. Guys. So, uh, well, what do you think are like the best ways um, that travelers can sort of give back to the communities that they sort of pass through? Because I, I find like people are so generous and they want to help you out so much. Do you know? If, like, have you found out any ways like that you do personally? Maybe that you sort of give back to the communities as you're passing through. I think just interacting with people mm -hmm. is all they expect. Yeah. Like you are only passing through for, you know, an afternoon or a day at most, most of the time. And like just sharing experiences with people, like for example, the towns that I went through where I had my accident, they're going to remember me forever. Like yeah. I'm going to be that guy on a bike that came to our town. And, you know, I had so many positive interactions with people that whole time there. Uh -huh. I, I, I think that's enough in a lot of cases in terms mm -hmm. of giving back, like just positive memories and share, shared experiences. Um, otherwise, like if you want to give stickers to children, like kids, kids love that stuff and stickers yeah. don't weigh anything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I carry around um, five cent coins yeah, because like they they're really really small. They're like a little bit heavy, but giving a kid a coin, even if it's just five cents in you know Vietnam, that kid mm. is gonna love you forever and is gonna be so stoked on his little shiny <laughs> coin. <laughs> yeah, I even had the idea once yeah. maybe to like take a Polaroid camera and and like take photos with them and then give them the physical photo or something like that. Even. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's there's um quite a few people that carry around printers and like yeah. take portraits of people. Yeah. Yeah. I've, um, I've met quite a few over the years, which is cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I think a lot more people have smartphones now. So mm. photos are almost becoming less important because yeah, everyone has a way to, to take photos now. That's right. Yeah. But like 10 years ago, some places would never have even seen a camera before. So, it would be a completely different gift to give. Mm. Yeah. So um, I guess it's a bit of a broader question, but if you can, um, how would you sort of sum up your sort of life's philosophy? Um, yeah, that is quite a broad question. Yeah, sorry if it's a bit tough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess I like to have, like I have quite a, lifelong learning philosophy. So mm -hmm. I am constantly trying to learn new things and, and teach new things as well. Um, so I think that that plays a very big role in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I also love to share. And I mean, most of that is just through social media videos, the website, all of that kind of stuff. Um, sharing information, I think that's like one of the most important things you can do. Yeah. Um, and then compassion and being kind, mm -hmm. like those, those are just two things that anyone can do and it makes you feel better and it does better for the world and there's like literally no downside to it. So why would you not be the most kind and compassionate you possibly can? Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'm also super passionate about the environment. So um, I get to experience all of these incredible places as they are currently. Mm -hmm. And there's just so many ways that humanity is doing 
things that are going to affect these climates or not not even just the climate like logging and mining and um, creating roads and expanding cities like all of these things are having a cause on like landscape degradation so yeah just talking about that stuff to people all the time mm -hmm. is something that i try and do yeah awesome yeah i don't know if i answered your question but they're kind of no, some of the good. things i live by <laughs> no that's awesome all right, so um, I guess after you finish your, your trip into sort of Alaska or whenever you finish your trip at the moment, um, what's sort of planned after that? Like, uh, have you got any other things that you're sort of working on after that? that you it's, will be? it's too far away to know. Yeah. But mm -hmm. in the back of my mind, I've got living in Canada for a year. Okay. And just exploring North America in more depth, like not even necessarily with a bike like yeah. doing more skiing and climbing and running and snowboarding and other it, definitely adventure type stuff. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah, maybe broaden everything a little bit. Yeah. Um, otherwise, possibly go home for a while. Yeah, so, so home's in <laughs> Melbourne, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, obviously I miss my family and friends and stuff. So yeah, yeah. If I add a year in Canada, then it'll be four years between like leaving and oh, getting wow. home. Yeah. Wow. Um, Is that the longest time you've been away? Um, well, it was about two and a half years when I rode from um, Amsterdam back to Melbourne. So oh, yeah. it'll be, it's pretty close. Yeah. Um, but then if I'm enjoying what I'm doing as much as I am now, I'll probably go to Africa. Yeah. Realistically. Because, um, yeah, like the more you travel, the more you have the itch to travel more. Yeah, that's right. You get that which is, travel bug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, and it just gets exponentially greater. It's yeah. ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll get to Alaska and then go, well, might go home for a few months and then jump back on the bike and ride around Africa or something. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, yeah. Like, I can't possibly know what's going to be going on in my head in a few years. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, yeah, that, that's about it for the interview. So, thank you for taking the time to have a chat with me and all that stuff. Really yeah, appreciate no it. No worries. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. All Happy the best with your recovery and all of that stuff. I hope you get back on the road soon. So, awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Ciao. See you later.